Welcome to Founder Stories. I'm Mike Abbott. Today with me, I have Ram Ram Kumar from Concept.io. Welcome. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about Concept.io. We're releasing a product, a product called Swell. Swell is like Pandora for news and information. It streams audio content. Uh, it's a mobile app available on the iOS App Store. Uh, aggregates content from quality sources like NPR, TED Talks, ABC News, top iTunes podcasts. Brings it to you in a really easy to use, convenient interface. You can use it in the car, you can use it when you exercise. Um, the technology that powers well is an algorithm that understands how you use the app, what you choose to listen to, what you don't, and uses that to learn your interests, learn what you want to hear, and play more of that. So you did your graduate work at Stanford yep. in AI, yep. and then transitioned into being a co-founder of Snaptel, yep. sold to Amazon, now you're doing Concept.io. That's right. And at Snaptel, you were the CTO, and now you're the CEO. That's right. Tell me a little bit about what's been surprising in that transition shift from going from CTO to CEO for you. You know, it's a challenging responsibility. The most challenging part of being a CEO is creating a sense of mission in the team and having an awesome team that works with you. We're lucky to have uh, some of the key team members out of Snaptel that joined me at, at Concept.io. Uh, we have we brought a diversity into the team around having design in addition to engineering, having uh, a, a audio, uh, creating a team that is that really feels the sense of mission and purpose has been really challenging, has been rewarding. Um, there is more. There's more to the product than technology. There's the uh, consumer making it appealing to consumers and making it easy to use. Hmm. Um, you know, it's, it's been a it's been a great challenge. It's been it's been fun. And you have about 10, 10 right. people now. So right. uh, the app has launched. That's right. um, and one of the interesting things that many companies kind of uh, evaluate is, do we go fundraise before we launch? or after you launch a product, and you chose to do it after. So tell us a little bit about like, how you made that decision. You know, we, are, we want to lead with the product. Uh, we believe that it's the product that really counts and the product that really speaks for itself. And so, you know, we are confident in the product that it creates this lean back experience like Pandora for non-music spoken word content. It's an app, it's a service that doesn't exist out there That's a, that we believe is a category, an approach, a different approach to listening. You know, so given that confidence, uh, we are really you know, not, not discussing funding. We are mm -hmm. really focusing on that product. The product. Um, kind of switching gears yeah. to people. You, you brought some of your yeah. team members from Samsung, so obviously loyal engineers yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about mentorship and how, especially in your new role as a CEO, you work with those folks, or just how, how, do, you think, how, do, you, how do you frame that in your mind? You know, Mike, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here as an entrepreneur. I wouldn't be here uh, with any degree of success were it not for the mentors I had. Uh, late Professor Rajiv Motwani, whom both you and I know, uh, was an enormous was a pillar in, in my life. Uh, without him, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have done Snaptel. We wouldn't have done uh, Concept. And I wouldn't, I think the value of mentorship in the Valley is just absolutely enormous and cannot be understated. Um, having access to advice, connections, network, um, just having the wisdom, having the um, um, uh, really the um, you know the the willingness and the ability to help without expectation, uh, or, or, you know what Rajiv sort of epitomized the notion of paying it forward, of being helpful without asking for anything, and uh, you know I, I wouldn't be here without without that, and, you know. Uh, um, really, I believe it's, it's our responsibility, it's my responsibility to try to give back to the community as much as benefit from it. And in fact, that's, I think that, that's what really makes the value what it is, is that in the startup community, in the entrepreneur investor community, there is a give and take, there is a, a attitude of sharing and um, mentorship that's really, really powerful. I deeply appreciate that. I uh, have a very similar view, and you know, I would not be in venture, actually, if it wasn't for Rajiv. 
And I strongly believe that I agree with you that also in the paying it forward concept, actually O'Malley did a, a small little blip on, on Rajiv on that topic. Right. But So switching gears a little bit more to, to, to your product. So um, tell us a little bit more about that exploration for you to, to arrive at what Swell is. Because yeah. um, you were an EIR doing some exploration, you could have narrowed in. Talk to us, like, how did you do that exploration? Absolutely. Yeah, when we created Snaptel, uh, one of the lessons was as a use case around shopping, mobile image recognition for shopping that uh, became part of Amazon, it was not a, not a frequent use case. It was a use case that one might engage in every week or every month. You don't shop, uh, most people don't shop every day. We wanted to build a product that people use every day, that we use ourselves every day, and you know, we create something that really fills a, fills a need, fills an opportunity. And so that led to thinking around commute, around exercise, around the activities that we do, where there is an opportunity to fill a need. And so that led to the idea of a personalized new audio news service that you could use when you're commuting, when you're exercising. It was a sort of a sequence of things. Wanted to create a habit, wanted to create a product that would become a habit and a daily habit. Um, and then sort of my, my approach has been to bring, pick a, a problem that involves technology. And the, the technical problem we decided to solve was if you, a listener, could listen to anything, what would you most want to listen to right now? And so that's the problem. It's an algorithmic challenge combined with a consumer interface, mobile app interface challenge that we are, that we are solving. And recently, my partner, Mary Meeker, put out uh, some slides that certainly support the fact that more time is being spent in listening. How do you, I'm just thinking out loud, if, if we imagine the world with driverless cars, yeah. we're going to have more time. I mean, presumably, you see that as just a larger opportunity for, for Swall. Uh, that, you know, that's, that's really interesting that you say that. If driverless cars will thankfully reduce the amount of time you spend in cars, but you'd still be not looking at the screen all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll, you may be exercising, you may be mm -hmm. cooking, you mm -hmm. may be, you know, you may be doing things that involve being away from the phone, not looking at the screen. Um, so that's in fact uh, Mary Meeker's insight in her mm -hmm. in her slide was about computers and uh, information filling the white space in our lives, mm -hmm. and that that in fact is an inspiration for us. It's. Uh, in, we are inspired by we are inspired by uh, Barry's insight by uh, by Pandora in creating a lean back experience that is awesome for music. We're doing that for non music. Um, we are inspired by Cora as a service that makes you smarter. Each time you visit Cora, you learn something um, because you see you know questions and answers and dialogue. We want Swell to be a service that each time you, you visit, you get smarter because you learn something that you didn't know. Uh, we are inspired by Flipboard. Flipboard is a service that innovated in how media is delivered, how um, um, combining social signals, combining uh, the format in which the media is delivered makes it powerful. Um, similarly, as well, we are, we are about how the content is delivered in an easy to use, convenient format that allows you to discover great content, allows you to uh, enjoy the content. Focus, focus on and enjoy the content rather than the uh, controls that you might have in the app. Uh, a curious question for me is, um, you did again your graduate work in AI, yeah. uh, and I know just something I can empathize with is like, it's fun to work on really hard technical problems. And then, but you don't want to be in a situation where you have this great technical problem, but you're looking for a product. Uh, and I'm, this, you're obviously not doing that with Swell, but like, how do you balance that bias? Because that's, I mean, you're in graduate school. We both gravitate towards the hard problems, but how do you make sure that that's balanced with a product and a user, yeah. great user experience? That's been, in fact, it's great that you asked the question because that's, that's been really the journey for me, going from doing graduate work, mm -hmm. research, algorithmic research, to building products. And what I realized, building products is about solving the user, the consumer's problem, and putting this technology that powers it second. Um, a great user experience is really key. We're fortunate to have a great designer on the team. That's uh, um, really, it's the combination of great technology and design 
and focus on the user, focus on the consumer. You know, everyone talks about simplicity, but simplicity is really hard to achieve. Knowing what buttons to not include, knowing what, knowing what features to not include is in fact as hard as knowing what, what to build. Um, so for us, yeah, so that's been the journey, and thank you for What's been uh, one of the, the surprises that you've had of now being a CEO that you didn't anticipate that you're dealing with? Um, creating a strong culture in the team um, is not, you know, it, it takes effort, it takes focus and dedication. Um, how do you, you know, do there's that? More how, do you, how, how are you doing that? You know, we, we um, I guess number one, we are passionate about the product we're building. We're passionate about the, the, the company, about the service we're creating. Um, so we've kind of selected around that. The team's um, um, motivated by it. Uh, we, we organize frequent events. We meet, we meet on a personal front outside the office. We, we um, make an effort to you know, create a long-lasting team, not just a... Yeah, actually, uh, you mentioned yeah. you kind of meet outside yeah. at a personal level, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, one of the things that can happen with startups is as you grow and you add people, there's people with families and kids and some don't have kids. And mm -hmm. uh, But at the same time, I agree with you that having these strong ties is, is really critical because you're basically going to war. Okay. How, do you, how have you kind of found balance in employees that have different things that outside of work that you know, they have responsibilities for? The one common thread is to celebrate success, celebrate an accomplishment. When you know we are passionate about the product, when we hit an important milestone, when we release the product, um, when we uh, when we have a uh, an event in the company, so the success event, make sure to celebrate it, make sure to high five, make sure to make sure to uh, note that occasion, and that creates a bonding, that creates a sense of uh, um, you know it is. A few of the team members, you know, the, the really key engineer, engineering team members, we work together for a very long time. We know each other really well, uh, you know, our families, friends outside. And, you know, that's really the heart of the company. The heart of the company is this long relationships that... You know, Do you feel, I mean, it makes sense to yeah. certainly celebrate the yeah. successes, but what about celebrating failures? Celebrating failures, um, noting, acknowledging failures. I'm not celebrating, like, not, not partying, right. but like not, maybe not the high five, maybe it's the low five. I yeah. don't know. Acknowledging failures, yeah. knowing knowing what you're being. I would, I would call it being honest with oneself mm -hmm. for what's working, what's not working, being um, open about what's what's working, what's fail, what's not, and noting moments of failure as much as noting moments of success. Uh, you know. I think people are smart, our users are smart, the team's smart. Uh, you have to, you never insult someone's intelligence. You assume, you, you transparency, disclose, disclosing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, uh, yeah, I'm fortunate to be working with a really awesome team yeah. on, on all the fronts. Ram, thank you so much for joining us here thank at you. Founder Stories, and thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.